Hey guys, welcome to the first set of algebra notes for unit one, day one. So these are the first types of notes that um, we're going to be going through, and it's going to be over translating expressions. So what's the difference between an expression and an equation? That's going to be our essential question, and then we'll kind of touch on it at the end. Um, but basically what we're doing in these notes is we're basically taking English and translating it into math and also doing vice versa. So we'll go to math and translate to English. Um, just for a warning, my Apple Pen is pretty loud when it taps the screen, so I'm sorry about that noise, but um, I can't really prevent it. Uh, so we have some vocabulary words. We have add, subtract, multiplication, and division. So these are words that we've seen since elementary school, but it's important to know what kind of words indicate these types of vocabulary words. So for example, for adding, we have terms like plus or total, sum, in all, or and. And I'm gonna put a star next to and because and's a special one. We don't really think about it, but if it's saying four and five, you know, it might indicate to something, oh, maybe I have to add. All right, for subtraction, we also have minus, fewer, less than, difference, and remaining. All right, so those are words that could indicate to us as subtraction. For multiplication, we have times of product, maybe twice or three times, you know, something like that. Um, I'm also gonna go ahead and put area under multiplication, because when we're looking for the area of a figure, we're multiplying. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing for add and put perimeter, because perimeter is something we just add up all the sides, because it's the rim of something. So I'll go ahead and highlight rim for you there. So rim, we're adding up all the sides. So that's addition, whereas area would be multiplication. All right, last vocabulary word is division. So divided by is a good indication that we are doing division. Quotient and also half. So if I take half of something or a third of something, that's kind of giving me an indication, oh, I need to divide here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go into our first example. We need to create an expression to represent each of the following. So two more than a number. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this whole entire phrase here. I want you to note more than, and if you have a highlighter or if you're on um, a device that allows you to highlight, Please highlight more than. More than is called a turnaround word. And we'll go ahead and go to the side and talk about what a turnaround word is. More than. Oh, I forgot that I have a section on here. Things to know. More than and less than are turnaround words. Okay. Now let's talk about what that means. So what that means is that you see how more than is at the front of your statement here, like more than is at the beginning of it. Well, you would want to think, oh, well, the two is going to go like two more than is going to go at the beginning of my math expression, which is false. It's going to go to the end. So you're turning it around. It's going to go to the end of the statement. So two more than a number. So we don't really know what the number is. So a number could be anything. And if we don't know what that number is, we usually give it a variable. So we're going to give it x. So a number is going to be x in this case. So we have x here. And we know that we have two more than that number. So I would add two. Now the question is, do I put two plus at the beginning? Do I do this? Or do I do, oops, or do I do this? Or do I put it at the end? Well, remember, more than means it's a turnaround word. So if it's a turnaround word, you're going to put the two at the end instead of putting it at the beginning. Because the two does come first, however, the more then turns it around and makes it go to the end. So we're going to add two here. And that would be our expression. Now, it says create an expression. Expressions don't have equal signs. Equations have equal signs. So the equa at the beginning of equation gives you the indication that you need to have an equal sign. So there's no equal signs here. All right, going to number two, the difference of twice a number and 16. So I already found a keyword here. We have difference. So go ahead and uh, underline that. Difference indicates to me subtraction. So I want to put a minus sign there of twice a number. So 
twice indicates to me multiplication. So that's going to be multiplication there. Um, I'll go ahead and actually put a little multiplication sign that's a dot because we don't want to confuse that with our variables. Okay, we have twice a number and 16. Well, a number, again, we don't know what a number is, so we're just going to give it the indication x. So we're just going to give it a variable. It could be any variable you want. You can make it w or z or y. It doesn't really matter. But I need a number. And then it says it's between the difference between a twice a number and 16. So and 16, now earlier we said that and might mean addition, but it, it can vary, right? So in this case, we're talking about subtraction. I'm wondering all how my colors are. Okay, so let's talk about the difference. So we have the difference of twice a number and 16. Let's go ahead and look at twice a number. So I have something and I have twice of it. I'm going to be multiplying. So I have 2x, okay, twice a number. So if a number was 4, I would times that by 2 and I get 8. So twice a number. And we have the difference of that with 16. So 16 is our other number. I'm so sorry, I keep switching colors. Uh, 16. So I have these two terms here. I have 2x and then I have 16. And I want to find the difference between those two. So then I'm going to subtract right there. And that would be my expression. All right, things to note here. And let's go ahead and do that a different color. And separates two parts of an expression. So if you see the word and, it's separating those two terms, or those two things, you know, those two items that you have. All right, number three. The quotient of 25 and 3 times a number. All right, well, quotient indicates to me I have division. So I'm going to go ahead and put a division sign here. And I have 25 and 3 times a number. So do I 25 and 3 times a number are separated. So I have 25 by itself. And then I have 3 times a number. So that's going to be 3x, right? So my number is x, and I'm doing 3 times that. Again, you don't have to use x if you're comfortable using a different variable. You know, up to you. And I also have the quotient of that. So quotient means division. So I'm going to have a division sign like that, 25 divided by 3x. However, there is another way to write this. You could also write 25 divided by 3x this way. There are two ways to write this expression. Um, I do prefer this way on the right, um, but the way on the left is a, way, a really good uh, way for you to visualize it if you need that. All right, next one is number four. We have three less than twice the sum of a number and five. So we're getting lengthier. So now we're, we've been doing this whole like English going into math thing, so we have to basically dissect every single piece of the sentence. All right, so three less than twice. Okay, well, I know that less than is a turnaround word, so I know that three isn't going to be at the beginning of my statement, right? So let's just go ahead and forget about the three less than right now. We have twice the sum of a number and five. I'm going to work backwards here. So I'm going to work with a number and five, the sum of a number and five. Okay, well, I know sum means addition, and I have a sum of a number and five. So I have something plus five. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. I'm going to make my number. Let's change it. Let's do w. w plus 5. A number plus 5. We have twice the sum of a number plus 5. So now I'm going to add one more layer to this. And I have twice that. So I'm going to take this and multiply it by 2. Okay? Now it's saying twice that entire thing. So I do need parentheses. Um, and here's the thing to note here. If it's saying twice the sum... It indicates parentheses. Okay? If I have two times the sum of everything, then it's going to give me parentheses. I need it around every single thing I just talked about. Um, you're just hugging all of the things. Okay, and then the last part is it says three less than that. So everything that we just said, and then we need three less than that. Again, Three less than is a turnaround. So instead of the three being at the very beginning, up front here, it's going to be at the back. So I'm going to have minus three back here. And that is my expression. All right, so moving on, we're going to go from math to English. We're going to create a sentence for these expressions. So there are many ways, like so many ways that you could write all these uh, statements. But I'm just going to do my way. I'm going to give you my uh, interpretation of it. But if you think of something different and you want to come up to me and ask, that's also perfect. So the first thing I have is 2x plus 3. 
So how I want to write it is I see that there's a plus 3 at the end. So I know I can use a turnaround here. So the plus 3 at the very end tells me I have 3 more than. OK, I have 3 more than. And then I have 2x, which gives me 2 times something, right? So 3 more than 2 times a number. 3 more than 2 times a number. So that's how I'm going to go ahead and do that. Again, there's multiple ways. Um, this is just one way you could write it. The second one is 3x squared minus 4. I'm not asking you to write a sentence for you to just say 3x squared minus 4. That does not work. So there needs to be at least some type of indication that you can translate from math to a sentence. So one thing I could say is I could have 3, three times a number, right? I have 3 times a number. I have x, right? But the x is being squared. So I'm going to go ahead and say 3 times a number squared. And then I also have, at the very end, minus 4. OK. Actually, made a mistake up here. Um, make sure all of these are words. So instead of writing the number 3, I need to write out the word 3. Um, another way you could write this is you could say 4 less than 3 times a number squared. So that's another way you could write this. You don't have to write it only just one way. There are multiple interpretations. All right, number three, we have 2 times 1 plus x. Um, so I see parentheses. So let me go back to my notes, right? We have notes for a reason. They're for you to go back and reference. So I see that I have a parentheses. And I'm going to look because I, I noted something about parentheses up here. I noted that twice the sum indicates parentheses. So I can write twice the sum here. So I'm going to put twice the sum. OK, now the twice took care of this 2 and the parentheses. So now I just have to talk about what am I adding, the twice the sum of what. So this would be twice the sum of 1 and a number. Because remember, x indicates any number. So this is twice the sum of 1 and a number. All right, lastly, we have number four, where we have n divided by 3n plus 5. So this one is a little bit tricky because there's just lots of ways you could do it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do it kind of the way that you would say it. So this would be a number divided by, right, because I have the number, which is n, and I'm dividing by something. So this would be divided by... Let's see, we have divided by the sum, because we are adding here, the sum of 3 times a number. And 5. Now, I don't need to write the sum of 3 times a number plus 5. I've already said that it's addition by saying sum. So I don't want to say sum and plus at the same time. Um, so everything that I said in blue was um, the n was what I color coded in blue here. The sum was in green, and then the red part is the red, it's, are the things underlined in red. So that is translating from math to English. Oops, sorry, I keep kicking my desk. All right, the next one is we need to write an equation for the following word problems. Okay, we have a popcorn bucket cost eight dollars initially and fifty cents per refill. Johnny spent a total of twelve dollars and fifty cents. So here we're just translating from English to math again. We have a popcorn bucket that costs $8 at the very beginning, and every time you come up to refill, it's going to be 50 cents every single time. And we know that he spent a total of $12.50. I'm not asking you to solve the equation. I'm just asking you to write an equation. Translate this for me. Well, what do we know? We know it costs $8. It's 50 cents a refill. What do we not know here? We don't know how many refills he took, right? So usually the thing that you don't know is going to be your variable. And I'm going to go ahead and make x my variable. And I'm going to define that as my number of refills, because I don't know how many refills I had. OK? So let's talk. Let's, let's, let's get this going. So we have it costs $8 initially. So I know it's $8 to begin with. 
and every time I refill it, it's going to be 50 cents. Now, am I going to be adding that or is that going to be subtracted from my $8? It's going to be added, right? Because you're going to spend even more money. So I'm going to add the 50 cents, right? Now, how do we write money, right? If it's $8 and we have 50 cents, how do we write 50 as cents? We need a decimal. So don't forget the decimal. That's super important. It's not $50 every time you refill. It's only 50 cents, okay? And the 50 cents per refill. Well, per indicates to me that I have multiplication. This means multiplication, and I need to make sure I note that and I don't forget that. However, it's per refill, and I don't know how many refills I had, so I use X. So this is going to be X. Okay, and I spent a total of $12.50. A total indicates to me, oh, equals. And I have $12.50 over there. $12.50. And that is my equation. Again, the difference between an equation and an expression. Equations have an equal sign. These expressions don't have equal signs. They never have equal signs. Okay? All right, our last example here, we have Sarah went to the fair and spent a third of her money on a ticket and half of her money on food. She spent $18 in total. All right, let's think about this. She brought $18, spent a third of it on a ticket and half of it on the food. Again, we're not asking to solve it. We're just asking to translate this from English to math. So let's talk about what we, we don't know here. We have no idea how much she brought. Right? We know she spent $18, but we don't know how much she brought in total. Like she could have brought like $1,000. We don't know. So the thing that we don't know is going to be our variable, which is going to be the total money Sarah brought. Okay, that's the thing we don't know. All right, so let's break this up. A third of her money went to the ticket. A third of her money. And of means multiplication. So I have one-third... And then of her money. Well, her money is going to be x because we don't know. So it's going to be one-third x. And the operation that's happening there is multiplication, right? Because the of means multiplication. I just don't need to write that multiplication sign. Um, and then the second part is it says half of her money on food. Of still means multiplication, so we have half on her food. So half of her money. We don't know how much money she brought, but it was half of it. All right, now with half of her money and a third of her money, we're going to be doing what with them? Are we going to be subtracting them to get $18? Or are we going to divide them? What are we doing? We're adding. We need to add them because the total amount of both of those will equal in all $18. That is our equation. All right, um, some keywords here. I just want to go ahead and make a note. Keywords for equal. Could be is, was, are, result, or same. So some keywords like I was saying like, oh, she spent all of this money and it was equal to $18 or something like that. So that means you're going to be adding all of it to have it equal something or subtracting all of it to have it equal something. Regardless, you'll have it equaling something. So that'll indicate to you whether you have an equation or an expression. If you have any questions, feel free to come in and ask. I am going to be here during my tutorial hour. So again, that is our notes for